If you're a business owner and you want to use Gmail, well, this is the right way to get started with an email address for your business. Now, you may be thinking, well, isn't it just a matter of signing up to gmail.com? No, in this video, we're talking about setting up the basics of Google Workspace, which is Google's business version of Gmail, which is the right choice for small business owners. My name is Pete Moriarty. I've been helping business owners all over the world for more than 15 years on getting their technology right in their business. And we help companies systemize, organize, and scale using Google Workspace and other business tools. Now, to start this video off, we've got to cover the difference between Gmail and Google Workspace because things can get a bit confusing and Sometimes Google use the same names for both. Now, Gmail, like you would be used to using at gmail.com is a consumer or personal email service. And that's really designed for anyone to be buying TV subscriptions and searching the web and using Google Drive for your personal documents. If you use one of those personal consumer email addresses for business, number one, it doesn't look very professional, but number two, there are some risks associated with that. Now, I'm not gonna cover too much of that in this video because this video is about getting your business onto Google and I really wanna focus on that. But you can check out some of our other videos on why using a consumer Gmail account is a bad idea. Let's talk about getting your business set up on Google Workspace and we're gonna cover how to get started with that. Now, as I said, Google Workspace is the business version of Gmail and the big benefit that you get is being able to switch on a custom domain name so you can have your own business email address. Now, not only for you, but also for your staff as well, so that everyone in your business can have a professional looking email address. Now, the whole suite of Google tools are available with a Google Workspace account. That includes Gmail, it includes Drive, it includes Google Calendar. It also includes Google Chat and Google Meet for connecting with your team. Within Google Drive, you get all of the Google documents. So docs, sheets, slides, and even forms as well. And all of this is on a per user subscription. Now, there's different plans. There's an individual plan and there's also business plans. And if you're a larger organization, you would buy an enterprise plan. But most businesses, we recommend starting with the business standard plan. It gives you cool features like being able to record your meetings and have those meets automatically saved into your Google Drive. And it also gets you access to a feature in Google Drive called Shared Drives, which is the way of securely sharing your files between you and your team members. Now, let's talk about how to get started if you don't have an email address right now or you're new to the Google Workspace ecosystem. I'm gonna take you through the steps to get it going. First up, we need to register. So head along to the Workspace website and put in your details. Now it'll ask you for an alternative email address and also a backup mobile number. Good idea to have those in there, but you are gonna choose your domain name with Google. Now in the past, you could purchase this through Google Domains, but that business has now been sold to Squarespace. So you can go to any domain provider like a GoDaddy and register a domain name for your business. I'm assuming you've already got one, so I won't take you through the steps of getting started there. If you've got questions about getting the most out of Google Workspace, make sure you sub to the channel, have a look at some of our getting started videos that are here. And if you've got a particular question that you can't find an answer to, you can always ask at ask.itgenius.com and I'll try to cover it in an upcoming stream. As you register your account, you're gonna be on a free trial for the first 30 days. And my recommendation would be to eventually move to the business standard account when you're ready to actually put your credit card in and get started. Now, once you've logged into the account, the most important thing for you to do is to validate or register your domain name with Google Workspace. What this does is it tells Google that you own the domain name and no one else can use it in the Google ecosystem. There is a second step, which is enabling your MX or your email records to actually activate the email. And I don't recommend you do anything at this step. Now we've got a technical video, which covers all of the technical steps on getting your account set up, which I would recommend you review when you're ready to go live. I wanna take you through how to try out Google Workspace before you actually switch on your emails. And you can come back to the technical video later. Once you've validated your domain, it means that you own this account and no one else can take it from you. That's an important step if we're gonna be testing this out with any kind of real data. Now, the first thing you wanna do is inside your admin panel, and that's always accessible from admin.google.com. You go to the directory and then the users menu, and you can start adding users for your team. Now, this might be contractors, it might be staff, it might be virtual assistants. Anyone who works in your business should have their own email address. If you wanna get advanced, you can set up shared mailboxes like info at your company.com or orders at your company.com for people to share. And I cover how to access and set up shared mailboxes in other videos on the channel. If you have different email addresses that you would like to come into your central mailbox, well, you can set those up as aliases. You open up a user account and add alternative email addresses just to capture all of the different names that you've got for yourself 
that you wanna have captured in your email mailbox. Before we go sending emails to anyone, you probably wanna set up your own signature for your mailbox so that people can see who's sending them emails. Open up Gmail from the app menu, go to settings and you can set your signature there. Now you probably don't have many emails sitting in your inbox right now. You can get familiar with it or maybe send a test email to one of your colleagues. For now, let's explore the rest of the Google ecosystem. Google Drive is where you store your files and it's important to download the Google Drive app to your computer so you can synchronize up and down when you need to access them. It means that Google will effectively have a backup of your files online and in the cloud, but it's not technically an actual backup system. It's a synchronization system. You should consider also backing up your files somewhere else. Google Calendar is the obvious place to keep yourself organized and you wanna make sure you download the mobile app for that to keep it on the go when you're on the mobile. Not only can you manage calendars for yourself and your team, but you can also set automatic appointment schedules where people can book into your calendar if you're someone who needs to take bookings from other people or organize a meeting without emailing back and forward trying to work out when people are available. Google Meet is Google's online meeting tool. Similar to Zoom or Microsoft Teams, it allows you to connect with high definition video meetings and you can do that with anyone inside or outside your business just by sharing a calendar invite or by sharing the URL link to a meeting. As long as they have a compatible browser, which most computers do, you'll be able to instantly join a meeting with anywhere in the world. Google Chat is the best way to stay in touch with your team for quick, short messages. And I don't recommend trying to do all of your work on chat because it can be a bit distracting, but it is useful to have it there to connect with your team. In your Gmail window, you can open up a new chat and just start typing someone's name to send them a direct message. You can also create rooms or spaces where there are shared spaces for multiple people to work together. And think about it like a group chat where multiple people can be contributing, sharing files if they need to, but for the most part, just keeping in touch with active work. If you have a group chat with lots of people in there, it's our recommendation that you use threads to start a conversation. You start a topic and then create a thread under that topic just to keep the chat room nice and organized. Google's set of documents and collaboration tools allow you to actually get your work done. Whether you're creating a document, working on the numbers on that spreadsheet, or even creating a form or an amazing presentation. Google documents allow you to do all of that live and in the browser, and even share them with your colleagues in real time if you need some help working on a document. You can use version history to go back to previous points in time and find any changes that you made to a document. And that's a great way of keeping up to speed with what's happened in the past, and what changes you might need to bring into the latest version of a document. Once you've found your way around the Google ecosystem and you're comfortable that you are ready to get started, well, you can go back and enable your mail services. Now, for some domain providers, this is a matter of clicking one button and it'll automatically be activated, but we also have technical guides on how to set this up. And I'll tell you, there are some gotchas if you don't get this right. In the worst case, your emails might end up going to spam or not even being delivered to someone if you don't set your DNS settings correctly. And if you'd like some help with that, you can click on the link down below and get instant support from our team to help you make sure your mail settings are correct. If you've activated them and you're not instantly receiving emails to your new mailbox, well, you might've got something wrong. If you need professional help, our team are on call most hours of the day to help you out. If you're new to the Google world, it can be a little bit daunting to work out what all the bells and the whistles and the buttons do. And so we've created a free training library on our website, itgenius.com, where you can access different courses for getting started on administering your Google account, right to how to get the most out of your email and improve the security of your business, all surrounded with Google Workspace. We're experts in helping businesses all over the world and small business owners get their businesses systemized and organized. And if you'd like more help with this, be sure to reach out.